YouTube was it going? The Goat House is back after Thursday Night Football in Week 2 between the Chargers and the Chiefs. A little bit of a comeback for the Chiefs there. Kind of got a little crazy. I'm here to give you my main takeaways from the game. I'll give you takeaways from each team, positives and negatives. Go through this real quick here. Do this video every single Friday. We recap all the Sunday games in Monday's video. We also have power rankings, weekly picks, score predictions, and more every single week. So join us, like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, because we're kind of giving you all these points, takeaways during live games there, and there's a lot more going on. A whole bunch going on your screen right now. If you're interested in any of it, they are, there are links pinned in the comments for you, our uh, Picks League with prizes and a lot more. So check it out. And again, very important to follow that Twitter. So kind of the key takeaways uh, overall in the game. Uh, next, we'll go to the Chiefs positives and negatives, and then we'll go to the Chargers real quick. But yeah, I thought the Jalen Watson pick six was the play of the game. I remember turning on tape of him at Washington State, and he was a little inconsistent, but you know, it was impressive to me. It was kind of a sleeper of the draft, so uh, good to see him step up when he's uh, needed to step up because they had some injuries. You know, McDuffie out at the cornerback position, but the Chiefs always got some under the radar corner that just makes crazy plays or makes a big play, you know, here and there. I remember when Legeria Sneed first came in. Uh, you know, so Watson, that pick six was huge. If you had to pick one single play, obviously it's that. I mean, that if that doesn't happen, you say the Chargers have a good shot to win. It's not only picks it off in the red zone, but takes it back for six, uh, you know, against one of the better quarterbacks in football and Justin Herbert. Uh, yeah, that was a tough one. I mean, it wasn't the worst throw in the world. I see what, you know, Herbert was, you know, it felt like he needed to throw inside of Everett. Everett was kind of the momentum was he was kind of leaning the one way, so it was very tough. It's I don't know if it's really like it's that guy's fault. Like he blew it. Um, you know, Herbert really shouldn't make that throw in that situation, but it's the type of quarterback he is because he can make those types of throws. So I, I see what what he was, uh, you know, going for there. I know Everett was trying to come off the field because he was dead. You know, after a few plays in a row there, but um, you know, so maybe that resulted in him not being able to get. I don't really blame Everett much there, so that was tough. But like, like I said, that was kind of the single play of the game. But kind of the the difference in the game to me, I was saying this on Twitter last night, was the Chargers dropped their interceptions and the Chiefs ca caught theirs. And not only did they catch catch their one, they ended up dropping one later. But not only did they catch the, that one, they took it back for six. So that was really it was a major difference, you know. And the Chargers dropped interceptions came from Asante Samuel Jr., who had a really good game like Titan coverage flying up to the ball right spot right time and it's a playmaking type of guy that you expect to catch the ball though so the difference in in those drops pretty significant like he could have won the game with one of those catches and we'll talk more about that um, and then some other you know the negated interceptions so interceptions that were taken away um, so there were well, there were chances at, I guess, four of them because you had the, the two drops. One, they originally called a catch, which I agree with the reversal um, you know, on that one because I know we were talking on Twitter too. There's a lot of people out there that think like they can't believe that that was reversed. To me, that was clear cut, clear as day. Uh, you know, The ball hit the ground as he was trying to gather it. It, you know, the hands weren't firmly on it on top of it, came loose on top of it. I mean, to me, if because he lost it in the first place and he dove for it and then he got his hands on it, uh, and then, you know, I think if it hit the ground there, I still would call it, you know, a, an incomplete pass, but he was trying to gather it as he was going to the ground and it hit the ground as he was trying to do that, and then his chest came into the ball, which eventually put, already hit the ground at this point, already put, then... Then it put the his chest put the ball into it firmly into his hand. He came up with the ball, so it was already too late at that point. So, um, it, to me, that was one hundred percent clear cut, um, a dropped interception, and the reversal was the was the right call, like one hundred percent. There's a lot of debatable calls in football. I don't think that was one of them. I think that's non debatable. It's just clear cut. I think maybe the people that see interception there or can't believe it's a reversal or kind of seeing what they want to believe perhaps only thing I can think of because that it's pretty mind blowing that that many people think that that should have so I'm coming from a neutral side here don't have a preference who wins this game I just call it as, as it is so uh but then the first uh, or no then and then there was another drop by Samuel but then the the pass interference calls we'll go to the second one the second one McCall Hardman attacking the ball up in the air he clearly got hit wrapped up before the ball got there right call back up first one uh, which was early in the game. That is the one and only questionable call of the game. 
uh, there. Well, I guess there was maybe a couple other small questionable calls on uh, that didn't really favor one side, I suppose. But uh, really, there was one questionable call in the game, and it did end up leading to a Chiefs touchdown. So it was early in the game. But yeah, I thought there was kind of contact by both guys. You can even say the receiver who wrapped an arm around the DB, you know, maybe there was a little more contact there. So that was a little bit of a questionable one, and that, that took away interceptions. So um, I guess, yeah, the t- the interceptions that could have been uh, were a big factor. Kind of the top three were just the big things of the game. Like the Chiefs caught their interception. They took it back for six. The Chargers, it's just a big missed opportunity game in general from the Chargers, but they missed opportunities with the interceptions. I mean, you're away against the Chiefs. You outplayed them for most of the game. You could not hang on. You could not make plays when when you had the opportunity. The Chiefs could, did, and they could and did. You know, so that was kind of the big difference there. Uh, Mahomes escaping pressure was pretty big. The Chargers got pressure on him, and he was able to escape. Uh, Herbert ended up being sacked more than Mahomes. You know, not that that's you know means anything with the Herbert versus Mahomes, but it's just was big in this game. Uh, with Mahomes able to escape a good group of pass rushers there and, and uh, make plays out of it. We saw one was a touchdown to McKinnon. It was kind of a sidearm throw, ridiculous play. Uh, Herbert injury. Yeah, that was tough. You can definitely see he was playing very injured and it was affecting him. Then he threw an insane ball at the end there when the game was pretty much over. But, yeah, I was trying to think, did the injury affect this game? Like, in, at first I was like, no, nah, it happened really late. But at the same time, you know, the Chargers had to eventually, they put Chase Daniel in for a play to run the ball, and they eventually had to putt, punt, give the Chiefs the ball back, which led to the field goal, which kind of led to it being out of reach. So, and that's when the injury happened. So maybe a little bit there, but that was tough for the Chargers, for Justin Herbert. Corey Lindsley went down as well. That was pretty big. Uh, and then a big takeaway, Staley kind of goes from one extreme to another. Last year, he would go for it on fourth down a lot, and I liked the balls on him. Maybe he did a little too much, you know, but it, it didn't really work in his favor, even though even when there was situations where it was like, I probably would have went for, went for it on fourth as well or went for two there, whatever. Uh, it just didn't work out. So, you know, the people that after the fact will say, oh, it was terrible because it didn't work. But uh, there was moments where it was bad, you know. So he got ripped for that. And in this game, he went from, yeah, here, from one extreme to going for everything to to a complete other being extremely conservative, um, which really isn't the best look. Like maybe, it, you know, people are saying, is he not handling the criticism or he couldn't handle it? So he's, I don't know if it's that. I think, you know, I don't think he cares about what people say. But who knows? But uh, at the same time, maybe he's in his head a little bit. Maybe he's kind of overthinking. Oh, I can't do this again because it didn't work last year. You just got to pick the right times to do it. I think he was too conservative in this game. So I thought that was a huge, uh, you know, takeaway point in this game. But uh, to the Chiefs, the red zone defense, the defense in general wasn't that good. Um, it's funny because the Chargers end up with 24 in the end. They score late when it felt like the game was kind of over. So, so some people would say the Chargers maybe scored more points than what the Chiefs defense held them to. I would actually disagree with that. I, I felt like the Chiefs defense was kind of giving up more, uh, allowing more than what maybe the score of the yardage would say. Um, the red zone defense did hold up. They made they had a pick six from the red zone, and they made plays. They made stops in the red zone. The Chargers were kind of working the field. Uh, but then they made plays. And that kind of goes to that last thing list, listed, which I don't really love, a bend don't break defense. Like, you're going to give up all this yards, you know, and, and field position, but then, you know, you make plays. The good thing is you make plays in the red zone, but it looks like you can move the ball on the Chiefs. It, it really does. I don't know what happened with the Cardinals in week one. Um, they made the Chiefs defense look all world there, but I think you can move the ball on them. Uh, but the red zone defense got to give him credit. Edwards Lair was, I thought he was fantastic and somewhat limited catches that he touches. He got, um, he was great in the passing game. He was, he had that long run that was just, was absolutely huge for them. Uh, obviously at the end there to be able to, you know, get down there and, take away some clock obviously so I, I, Edwards Lair is a weapon we, can, we I think people forget that you know he's had some injury concerns in the past uh, but he's definitely a big time weapon needs some more touches don't really like you know I don't know if Pacheco got a whole lot but get, get the ball to Clyde a little bit more here Mom stepped up when he needed to uh, you know making throws when he needed to escape the main thing was escaping pressure you know and making the big time plays he was a little um, we see that one of the negatives it was a little sloppy with the ball. Sometimes he was very fortunate. He wasn't picked off more again. Um, the first interception probably should have stayed. The, the second one uh, that was PI was the correct call. So that take away the interception correctly. Uh, and then he had two dropped interceptions that should have been 
uh, you know, absolutely r- routine for Asante Samuel. So he was a little fortunate there. So he definitely played a lot better in week one, but he clutched up when he needed to. Um, yeah, something interesting I noticed is Jay Watson's. There was two different Jay Watson's. Uh, Jalen and Justin Watson. I thought they made massive plays. We talked about the pick six being the play of the game, but Justin Watson, the receiver that's supposed to be kind of down the depth chart, uh, was one-on-one man coverage with J.C. Jackson, and he put him in a blender. I mean, J.C. Jackson did something you should never see from a corner and man coverage. Um, you know, which he gave him his back, and then he had the whole inside of the field wide open. You know, only time it's okay to kind of do that move I was talking about on Twitter is where it's a post corner. You're almost supposed to. You're kind of running with the receiver on a post, and then you want to whip around – um, real quick, too. That's just the, the correct way, the fastest way to do that, to get back to the corner. But you never want to do that when you're on the sideline and give the in man coverage, give the whole f- middle of the field to the receiver. And he didn't even need to go all the way to the middle of the field because he didn't. He just didn't need to. He already had him beat that much. So uh, that was a big time route catch and touchdown that kind of kick started everything for the Chiefs. So credit to Justin Watson there and Mahomes reading that. Um, yeah, pass rush kind of. It wasn't a crazy day from the pass rush. I thought it came alive at the right time, right times. Uh, Chris Jones got Herbert kind of back in the own end, but at the end when they were, you know, unfortunately kind of uh, roughed up Herbert, you know, you don't want to applaud them for roughing him up, but they, at the same time, they were getting after him. You know, they were making plays, they were hitting, they were doing their job hitting the quarterback. So uh, that, that was great. They kind of came away, came alive at the, at the right time. Uh, they did start really slow early in this game. Like, man, this is like a boring Chiefs team right now, and they're getting completely outplayed. So it was a little weird. I guess the positive is, like, they can play a lot better than that. They can start a lot better than that. Uh, and, and But then they did, and they still won the game against a division rival. So that's kind of a positive in that. Going back to the first drive, they were moving pretty easy. Like, they were running the ball up the middle. They were, dump, they were dumping it off underneath in the flat. It was working. I'm like, oh, this is going to be dominance this is going to be easy and then they had a third and two at midfield and I don't like that weird end around call that you kind of had to go backwards first to and they end up losing yards and then they couldn't go for it on fourth it's just it's just not a smart call like it, it do what was working don't go backwards and then that's definitely a play like you're in position to go for it on fourth down but if that play you know there's a shot goes wrong uh, if it goes wrong you cannot go on fourth down and end up being the case so then you know one thing that kind of I, I think affected a little bit of a slow start, which I thought it was a well-called game overall, but just that one play. There was a chip shot field goal from like the one-yard line kind of later in the game that the Chiefs decided to go for. It may have surprised a lot of people. Yeah, that was definitely the right call, and you can see that in the end, but it was definitely the right call because those short yardages were kind of hit or miss for the Chiefs, especially in that scenario in the red zone. Uh, and that field goal, you know, made a big difference. It put you, you know, it, it gave you the tie there, which, um, which which was huge. So I thought that was actually very smart, even at the time. Um, yeah, top receivers can't get much going. You expect Juju Smith used to be their top receiver, and then you expect it to be Marquez Valde Scantling. And these guys can they're like it's like they're non-existent. It's like these guys are are deep down the depth chart. I guess you can use guys like Valde Scantling to draw pass interference, which we see, but um, it's tough. So you end up having you know it feels like Hardman's their receiver one. Um, because they, I mean, maybe there's some chemistry, some trust, his speed on top of it, quickness. Um, you know, Volley Scantling has the speed, but, you know, Harmon made a little more quickness. Uh, you know, so it's kind of him. You see Justin Watson making a big play, and you see other tight ends like Noah Gray touching the ball. Uh, you know, Fortson scores a touchdown last week. Uh, you know, and you just don't – we just don't see – mainly Juju's the concern of Volley Scantling. Uh, there's no Sky Moore out there either, so it's a little weird. It's a little, it's a little weird. It's good to see that they can get other options in, and Mahomes can connect with them. But if these top guys can be those top guys that they can be, then we, then they're maybe in business. So that's a little weird. I thought, you know, the Chiefs didn't really have one of those slot receivers uh, like Juju. Um, you know, a consistent slot guy. You know, they would whenever they would dominate from this because Tyreek played outside mainly. You know, really. Whenever they, you know, have somebody dominate from the slot, it's kind of Kelsey. You know, playing that move tight end role. But I thought, you know, adding Juju in there, I thought it was going to be dominant, but it's only been two games, but, you know, I haven't seen much of it at all. So maybe it's just not a good fit, but it's it's too early to really say. But that was a little weird. Um, we kind of talked about the defense in general. But on to the Chargers real quick. Um, yeah, I started really strong. I love when teams come out and start. And it's kind of, there's a negative with that, though, because when you start strong and you're a good team and you're looking a lot better than the other team, that's great. And you out, you end up outplaying them. From I thought the Chargers outplayed the Chiefs for a majority of this game. Obviously not all of it. Um, 
you know, and I think it started with the with the start. But you, and that's a big negative here. They controlled most of the game, but lost. And I've seen it's only been a week in one game, plus one game, and I've seen so much of it where teams control most of the game, they outplay their opponent, and they cannot find a way to close it out. They cannot find a way to execute on the opportunities given, and it's just bad. That, that's bad when you lose like that because it's like. I know it's early in the year, so you can't have too many like takeaways for the rest of the year. But if you show that you cannot, you know, win games that you should win or execute on opportunities when they're presented to you, it's not really a great sign. You know, it doesn't mean the Chargers are going to be bad, but it's a team that wants to win a Super Bowl right now. Um, you know, so it's hard to fully trust teams that do that. You know, I'm not saying I don't trust Chargers. And I still think they are a very good team. I think they're going to they should be in the playoffs. I'd be surprised if they're not. Um, I guess we're waiting to hear about some injuries. But, um, yeah, hopefully they can figure out how to close things out, hopefully. And I believe in Staley to be a good coach. I like Lombardi, the play calling on offense, you know. But um, maybe they're in a little bit, you know, thinking a little bit too much in their kind of own hands. We'll talk about a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. But I thought Derwin James and Drew Tranquil were everywhere. They really stood out to me constantly on defense. These guys are flying around the field making big-time hits. Tranquil on the blitz. Derwin James is being instinct, in, instinctive, um, coming up in the line when he needs to, uh, you know, just just always at the ball. It kind of reminds me a, a little bit of Prime Harrison Smith, how he's just you let him do his thing, and if you know if he's he, and he makes plays, whether he's dropping back in coverage or coming around the line and being instinctive reading the play. So it reminds me a little bit of that, which is a really good sign there. Uh, and it's, uh, Sonny Samuel Jr. was very tight in coverage. He's flying up to the ball, making tackles. Um, you know, but then you see the negatives. Like he, he's got to catch those interceptions. Like he has to catch those interceptions. I expect him to. He's got to catch them. They win the game if he, he 100% win the game if he catches both. I think they probably win if he catches one of them. If he catches that one in the end zone, um, they win the game. So it's some. And his dad was kind of giving him shit on Twitter at the same time too. So um, you see the upside. You see the potential. You see what how good he is and tight and covered, like I said, but you got to catch those. Those are just major missed opportunities, so I can't really sit here and say that, yeah, Sante Samuel Jr. had a great game because of that. Like, he was good. He was great in coverage, you know, but you got to put it together. Can't miss those opportunities. They're going to get on about that because it's just the difference between win and losses. Is the game on him for dropping the interception? No, it's not his fault they lost the game, but just missed opportunities there. Yeah, big Mike Williams had a big night. Um, See that dominant contested catcher that he is. He's a, he's one of those guys that'll disappear sometimes because he's not really going to get separation. Like he rarely gets separation. So you know Herbert's got to be feeling it. Like I'm going to go. I got to drop this in the area, which he can do, but it's not going to be every second. You know, you see with Keenan Allen out uh, and the Chiefs' corners a little undersized. You know, you knew Mike Williams had to have a big night, and he had one that one-handed catch in the end zone. Ridiculous. Uh, Chargers got some pressure. It wasn't insane. They got some pressure. It's what you're supposed to do. But with the main thing you're supposed to do is finish it, get the quarterback down. They just really couldn't do that. So they're kind of letting him escape. Um, Mahomes is very athletic. He's sneaky. But it somewhat made it seem like he's way too athletic for the Chargers' pass rushes, which should not be the case. So that's not great. The Herbert interception we talked about earlier it was bad. It's not the end. Of, it was the end of the world in this game because they lost maybe because of it. But it wasn't like an awful throw, like, what is that quarterback doing? That's bad. I don't want to see that ever. It really wasn't that. It just was a very, very risky uh, decision there. I see what he was trying to do. But uh, then he had that injury, so that, and he definitely was playing hurt, so that's that's not great. And Lindsley had his injury and was out for the second half, so that is also not great. Uh, we talked about Santa Samuel. We talked about, yeah, control most of the game, but lost. Like, from a good team, you just shouldn't really see it. I don't care if you're playing a good team. Like, you, like it's... You got to put these games away. You you won most of this game. You had opportunities to win the game. A lot of people will blame the ref. Will blame the refs. I have there was one questionable call on that PI early other than that. There was nothing wrong with the officiating in this game. I just it's just the truth. Um the, the officiating is definitely not why the Chargers lost this game, not even close. Um they they had opportunities. They failed to they failed to put it away. I don't love to see that there. So I uh, still believe in the team. It's a very, it should be a very good team. Um, don't love the game plan when it comes to the run game. It, feel, it almost feels like they don't know what to do. Like you can run on the Chiefs. There was some downs where it was kind of free yardage. Uh, but it's like, you know, do we put Eckler in here or not? Like he's not doing, I guess he's not averaging a lot of yards running inside. He's not really your typical, you know, strong inside runner. So they're kind of getting in their own heads. Like we might have to use one of these other running backs. 
And, I mean, those guys are running okay on the inside, but they're not using those guys enough. They're not using Eckler enough in certain situations. If really, what it feels like to me, what it looks like, I think to everyone, is they really don't know what to do with their running game. I think they have a running game, and they don't know it. That's kind of what it feels like. Uh, and they don't really have a game plan, or it's kind of like, let's wing it when we get in there. And and I'm not a big stick to the game plan. I like going what's working. You know, go, you know, feed the hot hand, things like that. But it, 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 they're not really organized is what it feels like with the run game. So they're a little all over the place, and they could have ran the ball. Uh, I think it was more of just run the ball more. But, yeah, I guess Eckler can't get much going on the inside. He's doing very well on the outside, uh, running and pass catching. So it's just get get a, know your players' roles figure out something get organized this really feels unorganized the run game i think people should agree with me on that but uh then staley being too conservative like like i said i like lombardi uh, joe lombardi is an offense coordinator i think he's got a good playbook i think he, for the most part the play calling is very very good but i have the i have to kind of you know take some hits on him with the with running game plan i like staley too i think he's a good defensive coach like he feels like a, he could be a solid coach but he's kind of in his head a little bit too like with uh you know, do I go for it or not? He, he's got to, you know, he goes from one extreme to another. He's kind of got to get under control and figure out what he wants to do because I don't think he knows what he wants to do. That's kind of, it's kind of similar with the coach, offense coaching with the run game and um, with crucial decisions, you know, th- th- fourth down, we'll say fourth down, you know, punting, field goals, going for it, two point conversions, things which didn't pop up in this game, but um, that last one. But yeah, so I think they're a little bit in their own heads uh, on that. Uh, it's not something I'm going to panic about. Um, it, 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 you know, it's not one of those things where like it feels like it's going to stay that way. It just kind of working through it a little bit and seeing what works uh, and, and get that fine line. You know, figure it out getting the meet in the middle a little bit for both those things. So um, just something, just so, something I thought of there. So. Yeah, uh, let me know your guys' thoughts uh, on on the game there. We do this every Friday. Sunday games, we recap every Monday. And we got loads of NFL content in the week here with all kinds of predictions and more. Follow us on Twitter for even more content. Important links are pinned in the comments. Check it out. Please like, subscribe, turn on. Okay, John, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.